When it comes to working in Adobe CS6 Production Premium, we've really tried to provide an integrated solution so that whether you're in Premiere Pro working with Photoshop files, standard video files, or taking compositions directly from After Effects, we've really designed this to have a uh, just a nice seamless workflow that lets you jump around between the different applications and use all these different file types directly inside of Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro kind of becomes the hub of the overall uh, production that you're doing. Today, I want to specifically talk about some technology that we have that allows for Premiere Pro and After Effects, as well as Premiere Pro and Adobe Encore, to kind of talk to each other in this live environment where you don't even have to worry about saving files. This is something we call Adobe Dynamic Link. And it kind of works like this. Now, I'm inside of Premiere Pro right now, and I've got a timeline here. And uh, we're going to be working with and adding some, uh, some files to this timeline in just a second. But I'm also going to fire up After Effects running in the background here. Now inside of After Effects CS6, we've gone through and really revamped the way After Effects caches video frames. Now After Effects always works with this idea of doing a RAM preview um, of a composition so that you can see it in full uh, raster, full resolution. Um, and really kind of make some, uh, some nice decisions about you know, how everything's looking. You, you don't have to worry about compression artifacts while you're actually creating a composition. And this RAM preview technology has been around for a while. But what we've added is this new way of caching those frames so that even if you've RAM previewed a composition and you put that away and you don't look at it for a week, two weeks, six months, you can still go back and basically reuse those frames as they've been cached on the disk. This new global performance cache really speeds up the whole process of getting started inside of After Effects. So a while back, I went through and created this uh, project file, and one of the things that I did was I had RAM previewed one of the compositions. Now right now, I don't even have anything loaded. Um, I'm going to go ahead and load this project file by clicking on it here. And it's uh, going through the process of loading. Now what you're noticing here inside of After Effects is uh, the composition actually has this blue bar. And this indicates that After Effects has gone into the cache. It's found all of these frames were cached previously. And it's lined those up so that those are sitting on the disk. And they're ready to load directly into RAM. So when I go through and I RAM preview this composition, it RAM previews lightning fast. And I can immediately start to see it play back at full frame rate. Now the great thing about this is as we're bouncing back and forth between After Effects and Premiere Pro using this dynamic link technology, Premiere Pro will also take advantage of this global performance cache and can utilize those same frames. Basically, Dynamic Link is also very much aware that those frames exist somewhere on a disk and can then use those for playback in Premiere. So the way this works, I'm going to go ahead and take this composition here. And there's many different ways that After Effects and Premiere Pro can kind of talk to each other and you can move back and forth. One of the uh, simpler ways that we can go back and forth between After Effects and Premiere is I can just take any composition that I'm working on and I'll just go ahead and drag on this composition. So you can see I've got it over here in the bin and I'm just dragging on it. And I'm going to use the Alt tab, or on a Mac this would be the Option tab key, to switch applications. And we're just going to switch over to Premiere. And I'll just take this down and drop it in the Premiere Pro project. Now when I do this, I actually get the thumbnail of the composition. And you can see here I can scroll, um, I can hover scrub back and forth across the, uh, the thumbnail of the composition. I can double click on it and it loads up in my source monitor and I can even use J, K, and L to play this back. And thanks to the global performance cache, um, we get a really, really nice playback experience inside of Premiere. So one thing to be aware of when you're working with dynamically linked comps inside of Premiere Pro is that initially, um, you know, these are going to buffer into RAM, but if you want to get really good performance, you want to make sure that your global performance cache is actually found on a fairly fast uh, series of drives. One potential option is to use uh, solid state drives, such as the Intel 520 series of drives. They work really well as a uh, fast medium for being able to pull the cached frames and get them loaded up into RAM very, very quickly. Um, so that's one potential option when you're working with uh, dynamically linked comps.
Now, once I have my dynamically linked comp over here in Premiere, again, I can treat this just like a video clip. So I can go through and I can, you know, play this backwards, forwards. I can use JKL trimming on the clip. And again, we see a huge improvement on the overall playback from uh, past versions of uh, dynamically linked comps because we have both the RAM frames and we have the, the frames on disk. And again, we can just very quickly, those frames load up into memory and so we can have longer compositions than we've had before um, and we can have higher resolution compositions than we've had before. One thing I'm going to do here I'm, as I'm treating this just like a video clip, let's go ahead and just trim off a little bit of the beginning of this. There's this nice element at the beginning, but I kind of want to start the clip in motion here. So we'll go ahead and I'll just mark that as an endpoint here. And I've gone ahead and moved my playhead to the beginning of my timeline. So at this point, I'll go ahead and just drop this into the timeline using an insert command. And now I have this right inside of my timeline. Again, I can hit play on this and have this playback as part of my overall timeline. Again, even though this is a, a dynamically linked comp, I have the ability to just treat it as if it was a video clip. I can throw effects on it. So I noticed that this uh, clip is a little bit dark. Again, I have a lot of flexibility and options on how I want to correct this. I could jump back over to After Effects. I'll just use the Alt-Tab key to demonstrate that. And I could go through and use a color effect here inside of After Effects. But since After Effects, again, this would require me to then you know, go through and do a RAM preview again on this clip. It's a lot faster than it was before, but it's not quite as fast as the real-time color correction I have over in Premiere. And this is the real benefit where you can start to kind of play within both sets of tools, and it really opens up a lot of just really fast creativity for what you can do. So for lightening this clip up, maybe uh, using one of the color correctors inside of Premiere might be a better way of doing this. I'll just take the RGB curves effect, throw it onto this, open up the effect controls, and here I've got the RGB curves effect, and I can just take that and maybe boost, uh, put kind of a nice little curve here on the, uh, the overall brightness of the clip. And again, I can hit play on this, and it's just going to play. It's going to play real time. I don't have to wait to RAM preview. I don't have to wait to re-render the clip at all. It's an instant thing because this is now leveraging the GPU of the NVIDIA Quadro card in the system. So we're getting kind of this nice mix of all this different hardware working together, um, you know, giving me the best performance. So again, I'm not waiting around for things to happen. Now, one other example I want to show you is uh, taking this dynamic link one step further, and we're going to actually send this timeline over and get it ready for DVD authoring and Blu-ray authoring over in Adobe Encore. So let me go ahead and launch Adobe Encore CS6. And there's one quick change we want to make in uh, one of the preferences inside of Encore. Um, now Encore is actually tied in together with the Adobe Media Encoder, and we can actually offload any transcode duties that we have to do uh, inside of Encore over to the Media Encoder, which will basically background render the files into their final format. Since DVDs and Blu-rays require you know, special files, audio separated from video and whatnot, um, you know, the file that we are taking out of Premiere Pro um, probably isn't going to be in that format. We're just going to dynamic link the timeline right over so we don't have to render anything. And then we can actually do the background process with the media encoder. But we have to turn that feature on. It's actually off by default. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that on by going into the Preferences menu. This is found under Edit on Windows, but it would be in the Encore menu on a Mac. We'll just go into the uh, General tab. And there's a little checkbox for transcoding the assets using the Adobe Media Encoder application. So I'm just going to go ahead and check that box. And that's going to take advantage of the Media Encoder. And again, that's something that we can just have it running in the background. Um, we don't have to worry about it conflicting with any of the other applications because Production Premium CS6 actually uses a memory manager in the background. So all the different applications that are active, including the uh, Media Encoder, including Photoshop CS6, all kind of use the same pool of RAM. So if I have Encore open and I'm actually doing you know, menu design, um, I'm creating some sort of a transition between different elements, um, I don't have to worry about the fact that the media encoder is running in the background. It's going to kind of be pushed, maybe run a little bit slower because it's using background resources, but it'll just sit there doing its job um, and I can keep being creative inside of Encore and finish the other elements necessary for my DVD and my Blu-ray. So we'll go ahead and click OK on this. Now to bring a video clip over from Premiere, 
We'll go ahead and jump back over to Premiere. Now I'm just going to find this timeline here. I've got my timeline. This is my, uh, my intro timeline here in my project. So we'll just go ahead and find that timeline in my project here. And what I'm going to do is just the same way that I brought my dynamic link from After Effects over to Premiere, I'm going to pick up this timeline here inside of my project in Premiere, Alt-Tab, back over to Encore, and I can drop this right into my Encore project. And now I have my timeline here. You can see a little thumbnail of it. I'm going to go ahead and put it on an Encore timeline. So it's now an element inside of Encore, and I can go through, I can scrub through this, and you can see that we've even got, um, I can go through and I can play this back inside of Encore, and we've got our timeline inside of Encore. Again, no rendering involved at this point. These are actually live links between the different applications. And just to make a point of that, I'm going to go back and switch over to After Effects. Here I've got a, a composition going on. I'm going to go ahead and throw a, a color effect on this. Let's just go ahead and grab a uh, uh, color effect here inside of After Effects. I'll just use a hue saturation effect. Um, just kind of throw it onto the stack here. Start to kind of play around with some of the, uh, the values here. And you can see that this is uh, kind of adjusting the picture here. We'll give this a second to lock in. Kind of made the, uh, the blue really pop on this. Now instead of having to re-render this, I'll just jump over to Premiere. And I'll go ahead and jump to my dynamically linked comp here. And you can see that uh, that color effect has actually already uh, taken effect inside of Premiere. And if I jump from there over to Encore and go back to the beginning of my timeline, you'll see that this color effect has now been applied to the opening section here inside of Encore. Again, it's a live link. Nothing has been, I haven't had to render out any files. I haven't had to save anything. Um, that's the power of dynamic link. And that's a feature specifically between Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Adobe Encore, allowing me to be creative, jump back and forth between these different tools, um, and never once have to stop render files. Um, I can just keep being creative. Thanks for watching.